how to find the zeros or the roots of a function. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph here and I'm going to show you a function like this. A zero is the point on a function where we cross the x-axis. Or not necessarily where we cross it, but where we touch it. That means that I could have a parabola like this that just touches the x-axis, but it doesn't cross it that would also be considered a zero or a root of the function. So the way we identify those is if we look at it, we notice that whenever we have a zero, our y, our height, is zero. That is in fact why it is called a zero, okay? So we're looking at the points on our graph where y equals zero. That's how we're gonna find our roots, okay? So there are two ways to find the roots of a function, two basic ways, that is, and that is through factoring or through the quadratic formula, okay? So let's look at factoring first. I'm going to reference examples that we covered in our factoring video, which I have prepared just up here. For right now, I'm going to reference the example at the very end of our factoring video, or tutorial on factoring. And that's gonna be this function. Let me rewrite it down here for our ease of observation. f of x equals six x to the third minus four x squared minus 24 x plus 16. If we want to find the roots of this function, we're going to need to find where y equals 0, okay, or where f of x equals 0. So in order to do that, first thing we're going to try and do is we're going to try and factor it. Now I've already factored it here because this is an example we went through in the factoring video. If you are unclear on factoring or if you want to know how to factor from scratch, then I highly suggest you check out the factoring video in which we cover four different ways to factor. You're also going to see the tutorial on how we factor this particular problem. If this is the factored form of my f of x, then I need to find a way that I can set this thing equal to zero. We know from our multiplication rules that zero times any number equals zero. So that's what we're gonna try and employ here. We notice that there's a bunch of multiplication going on in this factored form. And we're basically saying, if I get one of these things to equal zero, then zero times anything else is gonna equal zero. So that's going to be my objective. I'm going to try and get these little parenthetical expressions equal to zero one by one. First things first, I start from the outside. Is there any way I can make two zero? No, it means I don't have a root there. Okay, I have my next parenthetical expression. I want to try and get x plus two equal to zero. How can I do that? That happens when x equals negative two, which means I have a root at x equals negative two. Next one. I want to see when x minus 2 equals 0. That occurs when x equals 2. So I have another root at x equals 2. And then I want to see when 3x minus 2 equals 0. So let's rewrite this as 3x equals 2. And then I can divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 2 over 3. And this is my third root. I found three roots of this function by operating on the factored form. We first need to factor it if we want to find the roots. Now a little challenge I have for all of you guys for extra practice, if you need extra practice on this, is to go rewatch the factoring video and anytime I factor something, like right here, I want you to find the roots. I want you to find the roots. I want you to find the roots. And there are a bunch of other examples nested in there as well. So that's what I want you to do for extra practice. In the meantime, we're gonna go reconsult our other option, the quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula is extremely useful. As you may remember from the factoring video, there was a lot of cases in which we aren't able to factor stuff. If we want to factor by GCF, there are times when we don't have a GCF. If we want to factor by the AM method, there are times when there are no two numbers that add and multiply to what we want. There are times when we're not dealing with a difference of two perfect squares. The quadratic formula is very useful because the quadratic formula works universally. It works all the time. It works every time. So the quadratic formula, as you might expect, works on quadratics. What is a quadratic? It is a trinomial. It is something in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. 
and the equation uses these coefficients a, b, and c in its derivation. Okay, so for example, how about we work with f of x equals 4x squared plus 4x plus 4, just to have fun with it, okay? So what is the quadratic formula? The quadratic formula is as follows. Your roots are at negative b plus or minus rad b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, that is your quadratic formula. Now, a lot of you probably haven't seen the plus or minus symbol before. All that means is that you are evaluating two equations. In one sense, you're evaluating the equation x equals negative b plus rad b squared minus 4ac, and the other equation equals negative b minus rad b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so you're going to get two roots from this equation. The first root evaluates with the plus sign, the second root evaluates with the minus sign. So let's plug stuff into our equation now, okay? B, as referenced before, is this term, A is this term, and C is this term. Negative B is going to be negative 4, plus or minus, rad B squared is going to be 16, minus 4, times A, which is 4, times C, which is going to be negative 4, okay? And that's going to be all over 2 times A, which is 8, okay? So let's simplify what's inside of our radical first. This is now going to become negative 4 plus or minus rad 16 minus negative 64. And if we cancel our negatives, that becomes 80. Again, all over 8. So now our next step is to simplify what's inside of our radical. Okay? We need to factor our 80 into something that is a perfect square and something that isn't. So what multiplies to 80? We know that that is going to be 16 times 5, where we know 16 is a perfect square. So this can be rewritten as negative 4 plus or minus rad 16 times rad 5 all over 8. Okay? Which can now be rewritten as negative 4 plus or minus 4 times rad 5 all over 8. Now, being that 8 is simply the same as 4 times 2, we're going to simplify this again by dividing the whole expression by 4, which leaves us with negative 1 plus or minus rad 5 all over 2. Okay? And now that it is in simplest form, we can finally break off our plus and our minus into their two separate equations as shown here. Okay? So that means that one root exists at x equals negative 1 over 2 plus rad 5 over 2, and the other root exists at x equals negative 1 over 2 minus rad 5 over 2. All right, guys, that's quadratic formula. That's factoring. I do appreciate all you tuning in. Enjoy your life.